Welcome to iLectron Line and our next hybridization orbital that we're going to look at is the sp3d orbital and where that comes in is it comes in with elements such as phosphorus which has five valence electrons now if you look at the electron structure for phosphorus notice that the 1s orbitals are filled the 2s orbital the 2p orbitals are filled the 3s and the 3p orbitals have one electron in each so yes Phosphorus does have five valence electrons in the outer valence band, but these two are already locked into the 3s orbital. That orbit is filled, so you would think that only these three electrons are available for bonding, but we know that phosphorus does bond with five chlorines. So how does it do that? Which orbitals are involved in bonding? A little bit of a mystery. Here's a model of what that looks like. Notice that we'll have uh, one chlorine up here, one chlorine down here, and then the three in the plane like that are perpendicular to the up and down location. Uh, notice that this is trigonal, there's three of them in a plane, and now we have these two pyramids that are base to base, so this is called a trigonal bipyramidal shape. So now it forms a shape, so definitely it is definitely not a planar structure like that with all five chlorines sticking out in a planar model. So this is just the lowest structure, but doesn't represent the real true structure of that molecule. So what happens? Well, it turns out that this electron actually does get promoted, but since there's no room in the 3p orbitals, it actually gets promoted into the 3d orbitals. So one of these electrons, let me show you, one of these electrons comes out here, and gets promoted into the 3d orbital and this electron will now be gone. Now we have five electrons available but we also know that the bonds are all identical. All five bonds between the phosphorus and the five chlorines are identical in strength, length and so forth and they're sticking out like that in this very nice shape and so how can that happen if we have a 3s orbital electron, 3p orbital electrons, and a d orbital electron. Shouldn't they have different energy levels? Shouldn't there be a different bonding structure? The, the answer is no, they're all exactly the same. So what happens is the orbitals get hybridized into something what we name sp3d orbitals. They're all at the very same level. They're somewhere between the p and the d orbital level uh, in energy. And so what would that structure look like? So let me attempt to draw that. So what we end up with, we end up with something like this. So this is the z-axis, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So if we imagine we're going to have one of these orbital shapes in the positive z direction with a small, tiny little lobe down here. Then we have a second one which is going to be in the opposite direction, like so, and with a small little lobe in this direction. Notice that those are the probability density lobes where the electron is likely to occur and even though they have these small little lobes here, the vast majority of the time the electron will reside in those big lobes. Now we have three more in the plane, in the xy plane. So if you imagine that uh, one will be sticking out here in this direction. Whoop, I went off a little bit too far in that direction here, uh, like so, and then a small little back lobe here. And then you can see that at 120 degree angles in the same plane, so we come around here, looking in the back here somewhere, there's going to be another lobe, and uh, coming around in this direction in the back here, there's going to be another lobe. Uh, notice, a little lobe like this, notice that these three right here all reside on the same plane. Didn't do a very good job drawing that, but imagine those three to be in a plane and those two sticking out like that. So now you see that you have five identical lobes representing regions in which electrons can exist. Since each one of those will have one valence electron, every one of those is now available for bonding. And you can see then that if five chlorine atoms come along, they all require just one additional electron to make a bond. So yes, they will easily then bond to the ends of these, sharing their one electron with the lobe here with the orbital, the hybridized orbital from phosphorus and that's how they form bonds and that's why every bond has the same energy, same length and so forth because the, hybrid, the orbits have been hybridized into those new shapes based upon the forces that are acting on each other. Remember that these electrons do not like to be close together so they're going to find the geometry that gives them the lowest energy state. The lowest energy state is a geometry that looks like that. So it's the trigonal bipyramidal shape that allows the lowest energy level to exist and for the bonding to take place like that. And in order to do that, 
the orbitals here have to reshape themselves into orbitals that look like this in order to make that happen.